Hey, it's Mosquito, also known as Chris. Welcome to the shop. Today, we've got a couple of the Fails patent planes out and we're gonna do some center beating and some side beating. So let's go and make some more useless molding because why not? Alrighty, so I've got a scrap piece of pine on the bench and we're gonna start off with the side bead. And so the thing about the side bead is <laughs> I wasn't really sure if I was supposed to use it with or without the fence because there's a little bit of a flat on the iron that kind of suggests that you should and or could use it with the fence. But when I went to use it with the fence, it was really hard because trying to keep this little flat on the workpiece being the only thing that's cutting while you're trying to engage with the fence and get it to, yeah. So I think it seems to work without the fence. And so that's basically what I'm going to demonstrate here. So just like all the other bases, it's got the front and the back base. I set it basically on my workbench like this when I'm going to be setting this. So I, you know, have these two loose, set it on the bench to make sure that they're perfectly coplanar, I guess, and tighten them down and then we're off to the races. So this is 3 8 and it's a good size. I like it. It's also the one that I sharpened. <laughs> so for this, what I'm basically gonna do is push the plane against the workpiece this way. So the plane, it's kind of uneven. There's a bigger fence, so to speak, on the, what I call outside. So left when you're holding it and it's a little bit lower on the right. So I'm gonna use that taller side as the fence. So you kind of just put it on there and whenever the other side starts to touch is when I go ahead and um, basically start planing. And then once this little shoulder over here hits the top, you're done. It's pretty much all there is to that one. So next up, we've got the center bead. And where the other one had one side that was a little bit longer than the other side, this side is about the same or exactly the same on both sides and has a shoulder on both sides. So there's a slight shoulder on the profile here on both the left and the right hand side of the bead, hence center bead. So this one, technically speaking, I could do what I just did and you know set it up way over here and only use the one side. But I mean, it's one way to get around not having side bead bases. Um, so, I mean, these are a little bit more universal in that regard, but um, essentially this will let you cut a bead somewhere in the center of a board. So I have the fence on it because you do need the fence with the center bead unless you have some other form of guide, uh, whether it's a board or however else you want to <laughs> make a guide, I guess. But you don't need the depth stop. This won't engage. As you can see, it will engage these shoulders way before it ever gets to <laughs> that depth stop. So I've got it set up with the fence and I'm just here, <laughs> wherever here is. And uh, we'll just start going at it. And I did find on mine, for whatever reason, the uh, fence, I, if I get the fence out of whack, it doesn't like me. So you might have to adjust it so that the fence is parallel to the body. I mean, that's not too uncommon. It seems like, I don't know if it's because of the square fence rod up front or what, but it seems like I have more of an issue with this than I do with my 45s.
And just as the other plane, once you hit those shoulders, the plane will stop cutting and you're done. I mean, the beads, there's nothing fancy about them really. One of the things that you can also do with the center bead is if you want to do some reading, that is a couple of consecutive beads right next to each other, you can do that with the center bead too. So as far as I'm aware, there haven't been any reading bases for the Fails Patent Plane. So what you would end up doing is essentially you take your base and you set it up so that the... Uh, well, one of the two edges, I guess it doesn't really matter which one, is going to be set up to be in one of the facets that you already made. So these irons have little two little flats on them, and that's going to end up on either side of the bead. So you just line those two up when you're setting up the fence, and that'll pretty much let you just do a whole bunch of reading, and you can set a bunch of them up, do as many as you want, and it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So... So now you can kind of see I just did the first pass. The one side is cutting, but the other side is not. So that tells me that I at least haven't missed too badly. <laughs> this, this might take a couple of tries, so you probably want to do a couple of tests first um, to get the flat right in the flat of the other one. Sometimes, you know, you might miss. You might be a little bit over, so you end up with a little tiny bump in between the two beads or a little bit wider spacing in between the beads. Or you might end up accidentally cutting into the bead, and then you have a bead that just sort of hits a waterfall. I mean, that's basically reading, and if you wanted to do it again, we'll say go back over to the other side. That is the same verse. And I actually find this way a little bit easier to set up. So if you do the leftmost bead first and then keep moving over to the right, that's personally what I find to be the easiest just because when you look down in here, you can actually see where that iron is going to end up. And so that just kind of makes it a lot easier to basically line it up wherever you need it. Again, pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward and not all that bad. And personally, using this as a beading plane or a 45, making beads by hand is probably one of my favorite things just because it's so easy. And in all honesty, if you wanted to have a center bead this far into a board, trying to set up a router to do that, you'd have to probably get into the territory of either a really wide cutter to make sure that you miss the collet nut or you'd have to be looking at like extensions or just run it through a shaper if you're so fortunate to have one. I don't, but it's just, it's nice because it's super versatile. You can put the bead wherever you want on the workpiece. You can read, you can do a single bead, you can do a side bead. Really, whatever you feel like doing with this thing, it seems like it's pretty easy. So yeah, that's uh, side beading and center beading with the Fails Patent Plane and a little bit more useless molding because that's just what we do here. I should make a challenge to myself to figure out a way to <laughs> make a project with all the useless stuff I make just demonstrating these things. But the, the center bead is probably my favorite of all the profiles that I've got um, just because it's... It's one of the few areas where it feels like the hand plane is actually more versatile and useful than the router. Like trying to do center beads, like I said before, is a little bit trickier when you're in the middle of a board with a regular router. Sure, it does. You can do edge beading and stuff like that with the bit that's got the bearing and the whatever. But then you've got to do it on the face. So this is nice because you can just leave it on the workbench, stick it in place, and then just go to town, do whatever you need to do. So anyway, I always appreciate those of you that stuck around. And if you're not already subscribed, I would certainly love it if you did that too. And I will catch you in the next one.
Hey, oh, come on now. Really? You're gonna ruin it for everybody? I mean, we had a good thing going. They didn't know. I wasn't... Alright, maybe I wasn't actually cut up. Just, yeah, whatever.